So the Industrial Revolution saw a gradual transition from handicrafts made in the home or in small shops to manufacturers created in factories, which in itself caused social and economic disruption, along with improvement for ordinary workers and their families. In early America, for example, a regular part of women's work was spinning thread and yarn from wool or flax or cotton at home and then weaving the thread or yarn into cloth and making homespun clothing for their families. This was hard and slow work, and it took a lot of women's time. As soon as they were able to buy cloth from textile mills, women took advantage of the opportunity to devote more of their time to other tasks around the farmstead. Often, they began market gardening, or they began keeping an extra cow and churning butter to earn what they called pin money. Pins were an example of a manufactured product that farm families needed, but that couldn't be made on the farm or even in the local village. Pins and other such necessities were usually supplied by peddlers who walked across the countryside in the days before easy access to stores, and then later by general storekeepers. The other side of handicraft manufacture, though, was the type of work done by the Huguenot weavers, descendants of refugee French Protestants in East London. This was a whole community of people who specialized in weaving using tools and techniques that were available before the advent of large-scale textile factories. They were put out of business, actually, by the more efficient manufacturing systems that went along with this new technology. But they didn't give up without a fight. Many became what were called Luddites, part of a movement of handicraft workers that would secretly enter the factories and destroy machinery, blaming the fictional Ned Ludd for these acts of sabotage. And the word sabotage itself refers to the wooden clogs that other factory workers wore in France, which they would throw into the machinery to break it, the sabots. Governments were quick to crack down on the Luddites and the saboteurs. A couple of quick executions usually took the wind out of their sails. As mentioned above, industrialization was possible because farms were producing high yields in the early 19th century, creating both an available workforce and a consumer market for many of the products of these early industries. In addition, nations like Britain with colonies had another lucrative market for manufacturers, as I said. Even after the American Revolution and the War of 1812, the United States remained a supplier of raw materials like grain and timber and cotton and salted pork to their former home country. In return, Britain shipped its manufactured goods to ports like New York, where they could be carried inland on the Erie Canal, and to New Orleans, where they would make their way slowly up the Mississippi River into the interior. Britain also cultivated trade relationships with other nations like those of Latin America, British representatives like the envoy sent to Simon Bolivar's Congress of the Americas worked hard to convince these new nations not to go to all the expense of trying to develop their own industries, but instead to just ship raw materials to Britain in exchange for cheap consumer goods from British factories. So, a couple of questions before I move on. First, why might Luddites and others oppose industrialization? And then secondly, what are the advantages of industrial mass production?